Brady Miller with Go Hunt, and we're here at the range today, and figure it's a good time to to sit down, and talk about a bunch of uh, basically rifle tips to increase your accuracy. And when I mean rifle tips, this is going to be all about rifle tips for a hunter, since I'm a hunter first. Uh, so we're just going to run through a bunch of things that you know, some things you might overlook, and other things you just might be uh, certain items you have to practice and just you know become more proficient at. So we're just going to take. I look at a bunch of different, you know, setup scenarios and things to become more accurate as a hunter. So the first thing I want to talk about is the importance of a bubble level. Uh, if you haven't yet, I did a video, what was it, last year on the importance of a bubble level on your rifle. I'm just going to reinforce that here right now. So if you have a bubble level on your rifle, you got to use it. There's two different, like, you can have a bubble level on there and think you're good, but you just always got to make sure before you take a shot, before you even set up for a shot, you're always glancing up to look at this bubble. Because if you don't, and you take a shot, and your gun's tilted off to the right, you might be on, on a big hill, you might think you're, think you're level, but actually you need to come back into it. Those impacts are going to drift left or right, depending on how the hill is sitting. So every time when I get into a rifle, I'll always be leaning into there and glancing up with my left eye and just making sure that bubble level is perfectly level. And if not, sit there and adjust it or you know adjust the legs on the side so just having a bubble level you just got to make sure you also are using the bubble level all right so the next tip and making sure you have you know increased accuracy when you're out hunting is ensuring a proper follow-through and by proper follow-through what i'm referring to is so the gun is unloaded make sure the gun's fully unloaded guys when you're getting in your gun have your proper hand hand placement on here uh, we did a video on that last year as well on I walk through the proper hand steps, but basically so I'm going to do is I press the trigger I don't want to press the trigger and just like, you know, willy-nilly pull my finger off to the side What I like to do is get in the gun get off square in position And so that way the recoil of the gun is going to come back into the main part of my body That's why I'm laying down to also keep my body in line with the rifle So everything's going to be all square and then once I pull the trigger I want to pull the trigger and I'm holding the trigger. So basically it's not even a pull, it's a press of my finger and I push back into the back wall of the trigger and I hold it there as that shot's breaking. I don't tap it and move it away, just push it and let it go. This is going to just allow you to also track your impacts. Everything's going to come back in the same line for the recoil. Your body's in the right position. You'll be able to see your impacts. If you're by yourself and like, hey, did I hit that animal correctly? You're gonna, it's gonna aid in helping you um, track your impact on an animal by just keeping everything in line, pushing the trigger, everything coming back, seeing where you hit. Another way to increase accuracy is to work on your trigger control. And one of the best ways to do that is just dry fire practice. Uh, we did a video a couple years ago on the importance of dry fire practice. And I just wanna reinforce some of those same things here is dry fire practice is totally safe for a center fire rifle. Probably should not do it on a rim fire, but center fire rifle, totally safe to dry fire practice on. Always, if you're gonna do this at home, make sure it's unloaded. And the best way to do it, just get in your shooting position how you would, have your proper hand placement on the side, obviously get into the gun, and just slowly press your trigger. Just work on trigger control, how it recoils back, just anticipating that, obviously not being shooting. Another thing you can do too while you're dry fire practicing is just take a quarter or a dime, put on the end of the barrel, get in a position in your gun and try to execute that trigger and make sure that quarter or dime does not fall off the back of it and just keep dry firing. Dry fire practice is going to help you have proper hand placement, how you push that trigger. It's all going to come into play later on when you take a, a uh, shot off an animal. Okay, so the next step is going to be rear support on the back side of your rifle. So there's many different things you can use and many different things I've used over the years. Um, Basically what that's going to eliminate is not having, when you have your rifle up here and you're trying to shoot at something, you're just, the backside is just floating up and down. So what I like to do is, you can even have a rear bag like this. This one's just made by, you know, long range only. It's just a big, heavy bag. Very solid. You can squeeze the sides on it. Rifle's locked in there. I use this one a lot at the range. Some people pack these hunting. They also make some smaller, lightweight versions. Um, besides for that, I used to use this old, um, just bag. It basically has a little, like, I don't even know what kind of little beans, beans or styrofoam stuff inside there, but super, super lightweight. You're able to mold it up different ways. You can stick it back there. All sorts of different ways to put it on your gun. 
but then one of the main ways I like to use when hunting is just a super lightweight, it's a rugged ridge rear support. Uh, it has different settings for different heights. And all you gotta do is easily set this underneath your rifle and you can move it up and down if you have an angled rifle stock to help support the rear of your rifle. So supporting the rear of your rifle, you got the front support too. It's just adding two different contact points into the ground and making you really stable. Like I said before, then your gun's not floating up and down. So you can sit there, you can be all locked in and your gun ain't gonna move. And when your gun's not gonna move, that's where you're gonna make your best shots because that's gonna be a fully, you know, relaxed situation and it's just going to aid in making that shot of a lifetime. So if you don't have any of these items available to you, you can easily just take a down jacket or take your soft shell jacket, roll it up a little bit, put it behind here. Um, if you've watched any of our hunt films in the past, I've also shot off my backpack several times by just taking my backpack, setting it behind the, behind the gun, and then getting something behind here. I will not shoot a shot that's like, you know, over 300 yards without something in the back of my gun. It just aids in that, uh, and that confidence level goes way higher and then I'm going to be fully steady having two contact points. So, importance of rear rear support. Just have one. Doesn't matter what you use, but just use it and also practice with it. That's going to be the biggest thing too. Um, don't take any of the stuff in the field if you've never practiced it before. All right, so next thing I'm going to talk about is having a proper cheek height on your gun. So if you've seen any of my guns over the years, you've noticed that I always have something on the rear of the gun to help with my cheek height. Um, you know, I have a 20 MOA rail. I usually shoot a bigger scope, 30 or 35 millimeter um, tube. So I need something that's going to get my head comfortable. And besides for that too, is the, the whole comfort factor. Like some guys might not be able to get super low in the gun just because they might have some back issues or something like that. So they might have a lot of stuff that needs to be higher up and you have a higher up scope. So, you, so when you're laying prone, you're actually laying super comfortable in your gun. So you need to have something in the back of your rifle for your cheek weld. And the great thing about the, the new uh, 2020 Browning stocks is this is its Browning Max composite stock. It actually has an adjustable cheek piece here in the side. Just a little dial, lift it up, drop it down. So I know that mine is right about five. I can easily tighten that down. And that way I don't have to, when I get into the gun, what I'm trying to avoid is having to like lift my head up or lift my head down. I want my head to be looking straight into the scope. So well, let's get into my gun, get nice and comfortable, and then open my eyes. And if it's not in the right position, just loosen up the side. Lower it down a little bit, and then retighten it. Another thing too that's nice about the Brownings in the back, they actually have little numbers. So you actually can remember where yours is at. If you're out in the field and maybe you have a different one that doesn't have that, you can also use a bullet to gauge it. Let's say this is like perfect right now. Fits my 300 Win Mag um, case right in the back. So I know to set it at that height. Uh, there's a plenty of other different methods you can do it. Some of the other guns before, I've taken a Kydex little uh, cheek piece and drilled it in the stock. Not that hard, it's a little bit scary first to drill it. Or you can have rear bags that slightly go over the entire rear stock and actually have little shims with Velcro that you can use it for um, just to get your cheek height, up, cheek height up higher. So basically, just the importance of a cheek height, you wanna be super comfortable and be able to look straight through your scope and just have something that's gonna be repeatable that you can use every single time that's not gonna move on you. So another big thing when it comes to overall accuracy while you're out hunting is ensuring you have a proper uh, position behind the rifle. This goes into more than just uh, how to be comfortable. Uh, basically, when you're shooting you know, long range repeatability, even short range shots, everything shooting this gun needs to be in a system. Like, it has to be repeatable. So everything you're gonna do right now is just to add that increased accuracy by being a repeatable body position and something that's gonna be comfortable, but also it's gonna enable me to um, take those impacts from the recoil, but also be able to then track my impacts down range. Like if I got into a gun, and I'm sitting off here on the side, sitting off here at a complete you know, side angle, my gun's barely on my shoulder, and I take a shot, the recoil of the gun is gonna throw everything off and I'm not gonna be able to track the impact. I could be hunting solo, I have a giant buck out there and I want to be able to sure I hit it and if I'm laying like this and I'm shooting my gun and I'm shooting at a weird angle um, being having that kick off to the side is not what you want so what you always want to do is when you're shooting lay straight behind the gun oh, my gun is just sitting you know right in a little pocket on my shoulder and then when I'm straight behind here um, everything recoil gun goes back hits my body transfers through my whole body to not make me move off to the side. It also just makes a nice stable platform too.
And so I'll just demonstrate that right now, how I would uh, lay down and take a shot. The easy way to do it is to hop down on the gun and you want everything off to your right side of your face, obviously if you're a right hand shooter. So let's get right in there, scoot up into the gun, get comfortable. And while I'm doing this too, I also gotta make sure I have a wide base. So I like to have a wider base, kick, feet kicked out to the side. I don't like to kick my toes up. And just nice repeatable body position. So as you can see, we're at the range. Um, if you've you know seen any of my Instagram stories or whatever I do usually, I don't shoot at the range a lot because I don't like shooting off a bench because I'm hunting. I'm a hunter, so I, I always like prone, prone a lot. So if you come to a range like this, don't be afraid to throw a bag down, especially if there's no one near you, and shoot off the bag the whole time. Just to simulate hunting situations a lot more. Another really good thing too about checking out your form while you're shooting is to have your friend take a picture from behind you so you can see how your body position is. Because you might think you're straight behind the gun, but you're actually, you know, kicked off a pretty good angle. So just having a friend come walk by, kick your feet over, be like, hey, you need to move your body over. That's going to just help you to reinforce sitting straight behind the gun to absorb those impacts and track those long range shots. So one of the biggest things to increase the accuracy while you're out hunting is letting the tools you have do the job for you and also knowing how to use those tools. So what I mean by that is most of us nowadays, we all have a rangefinder. So we have one of these, you know, more complicated rangefinders, this is a SIG uh, Kilo 2400 ABS. Um, does all my ballistics calculations for me. Um, but the biggest thing is just knowing how to use this stuff while you're out in the field. So you have to take it out in the rain, to the range, even sitting in your office or sitting in your house and practice how to use some of these tools. Figure out what it does when you, you know, click the range button and then how to change a wind call in some of these. Um, and then how to also transfer that to your, to your turret. So practicing both of these things, clicking, ranging something, popping up, adjusting your dial, dropping it down, taking the shot. Practice in those situations too. And also um, comes into play too of practicing some of the equipment you use. So Kestrel, um, this is a Kestrel 5700 Elite. It is a beast of a ballistic solver for rifle hunting. Um, but you gotta know how to use it too. So practice how to set up the menu, how to sync it over with your phone, enter all your gun data in there so you can get your hold over. Um, and also what I like to do when I come to the range is I collect data all the time. And I use both these tools, all of them together, even my cell phone too, to sync over profiles. And I keep data on every single gun. Basically I have one of these books for every gun I own. I write down everything from the weather conditions that I'm shooting, what I actually shot, what the Kestrel told me to shoot for, what the SIG told me to shoot for, and then if I needed to correct that. And basically over time, I just get a bunch of data about what the conditions are doing and how that's impacting my shots. So the other day I was working on um, fire forming br brand new brass. I wrote down all the weather conditions. Um, I write down all the shots that I take in this barrel so I can just track barrel life. And then just all the specs of all my reloading equipment and everything I use when I'm out here shooting. Just keep everything detailed and organized and it's just to make you a better shot so you can take situations you've encountered before be like, oh yeah, I know my gun at you know 15 mile an hour wind is impacted by this at this range because I've tested it out in my Kestrel. I know what the Kestrel says and I know what a real life situation will also say. So just taking all these tools with you. It's great to have all the most you know fanciest tools out there because they're gonna aid in, in you know making a first impact, but you have to know how to use them. You have to practice with them. So the best way to do that, get out to the range, practice with your tools. You get a lot of questions all the time about what size bipod to get for a hunting rifle and that's a rabbit hole uh, there's a million different options out there a million different preferences but i will say right now my preference is to have a shorter bipod so what i mean by short usually six to nine seven to ten somewhere on that range i don't like a bipod that has a lot of flex so that's as long as i like to have my bipod ever smacks it'll go it just means everything's gonna be super stable. You get some of those bipods, you know, that are 30 inches up high, maybe if they're set up for coyote hunting. Those are not gonna work well for a, you know, big game hunting situation in my mind because they're just gonna add a lot of flex in the legs and we don't want flex. So if you're gonna increase accuracy, you need to be as low as you can to the ground and that's always gonna be on a bipod. You can also shoot without a bipod. Sure, I've done it a lot on, you know, some of these backpack hunts where the situation didn't present itself. I just drop down, throw my backpack down, shoot off it. So this comes again to practicing. Practicing shooting with your bipod, shooting at different heights with your bipod, shooting off of you know, your backpack, shooting this off a rock, off a, off a log. But the big thing is, is just being stable and being comfortable and a bipod is gonna get you that. I just will not suggest going a crazy long bipod. The only time ever I needed a, a longer bipod was spring bear hunting this last year in Montana. We were setting up to, to shoot this bear that we thought was gonna come up way above us. 
and I needed a lot more height in my bipod. Uh, I swapped over to Neville's bipod, tried to use that, ended up not needing it because the bear came out in a different position and I was able to shoot super low to the ground, but just when I set up for that shot, or anticipating for that shot, it just didn't feel comfortable. I would lay into the gun and practice on it, and I could just feel the gun bouncing up and down a little bit. So, to me, shorter bipod's gonna always win. There's always gonna be ways you can move around on a mountain to get a shot to make a, a better um, first round shot on the animal of a lifetime. So, short bipod, try them out. It's the way to go. So now I wanna talk about parallax and how that's gonna help you on your next hunt. So a lot of people call this knob on the left the focus knob, which it does both. Um, I won't get into the details of parallax. There's a lot of other great research out there that's gonna describe it for you. But well, one thing I wanna talk about is not trusting the numbers on the left. So you can see on mine, my parallax knob, I have numbers all the way down from you know 32 yards all the way to infinity. So just past 500 yards goes to infinity. So when you're setting up for a shot, let's say, you know, 500 yards, if I get into the gun, I can move this right to the 500. It's gonna be a quick way to reference where I possibly need to be. But then you're gonna wanna lay into the gun, get your gun set up, and then not touch your gun, then move your head left to right, and move your head up and down. And if those crosshairs are moving a bunch, that means your parallax is not set correctly. So you might have to go a little bit further, maybe go a little bit more in until you get your crosshairs where you're moving your head up and down and left and right and they stay locked on. That's when your parallax is set perfectly for that exact yardage. And if you don't do that, that's gonna, you know, could throw off and throw some inconsistencies out there when you take those shots. So just make sure you have your parallax set and always, you know, verify that parallax is set for that yardage and don't just go off these yardage and numbers on the side because those are just for reference. All right, so that's a wrap up on ways to increase accuracy for a hunter. And like I've said earlier, accuracy is everything in a hunting situation. And so we do, no matter what we can do to um, help aid in that, we should try to accomplish it by practicing, using our tools, using different techniques, putting those all together. Because shooting a rifle is all about a system of repeatability and we want to be repeatable in every single shot. Um, there's a lot of other things out there too you can do. Um, if you have any suggestions, uh, drop them down in the comments below. I'd love to hear more thoughts on it probably do another one of these videos here soon because there's just a plethora of different things you can do to increase accuracy so appreciate you guys checking out the video be sure to like and subscribe and uh good shooting this fall